welcome to this special edition of Talk Time. My guest today is Mr. Pradhu Dev Burman, the Maharaja of Tripura, former Congress president in the state and a well-known voice from the Northeastern region. Mr. Pradhu Dev Burman, welcome to this special edition of Talk Time. Hello, Vespeer. Thank you. Thank you very much. Hi. Me. My first question to you, what does the Citizenship Amendment Act mean for you? The government has obviously taken legal opinion before moving and shaking the bill and now making it into a law. See, the government has taken a view. We also have a view. In this country, there cannot be just one voice of uh, uh, order. If the government has taken a legal view, even we have taken a legal view. And our case was heard in the Supreme Court. And the Supreme Court has assured us that they will be issuing a notice to the government of India in this matter. Now, overall, what does the Citizenship Amendment Bill or Citizenship Amendment Act mean for you? Why are you so opposed to this act? How is it going to impact on the people the, in Tripura and the Northeast? Because Pradyo De Barman is not a resident of Uttar Pradesh, or because he is not a resident of Gujarat, or for that matter, Madhya Pradesh, they, it doesn't mean that we do not have a point of view. The point is that Tripura, which is a small state, has already absorbed lakhs and lakhs of people who have originally migrated from Bangladesh. Right. In fact, the only state in the country which is in theory passed the Citizenship Amendment Bill is Tripura. If you see Wasbir, in 1940 there was a famine in Bengal. My grandfather, who was the Maharaja then, allowed the people to come in. In 1946 there were massacres and riots of persecuted Hindus in Noakhali. My grandfather at that time allowed people to come in. In 1948, Kanchan Prabhadevi gave land to the Swasti Committee so that the persecuted Hindus could stay. In 56, the government of India did it. The 1965, the government of India did it. In 71, the government of India did it. Today, Tripura, the entire bureaucracy is people who have originated from Bangladesh. The ministers have uh, chief ministers, ministers, advocate generals, yeah. lawyers. Everybody has come from Bangladesh. And what has happened to the in uh, indigenous people of Tripura? So why should we suffer? Has any other state taken anybody else? So why should we be told to take all over again when nobody else has had the burden of carrying on people from outside for so many years? We are not against Hindus. I am myself a Hindu. But please understand, there is enough one state can take. So why were we not exempted this time? That's the matter. Now, you are saying, you, you saying that Tripura has seen waves of influx since independence, uh, you know, due to various reasons. Now, you are saying basically that the Citizenship Amendment Act will impact even more. Uh, the situation is going to get even more critical because you are a population, you are a small state with a population of only about 12 lakhs. Our indigenous population is 12 lakhs. The people who are not indigenous are close to 25 lakhs. You've already made us one third of the population. How much do you want us to suffer? And why should we suffer? We were the only ones who welcomed the people who were persecuted in Bangladesh to our state. We welcomed them. Today you are telling us, welcome them again, when no other state which has had a history, Assam has welcomed, Meghalaya has welcomed to a certain degree, but why, why, why should Tripura do it all over again? Why should Assam do it all over again? Why should Meghalaya do it all over again? Please take them to Gujarat. Please take them to Maharashtra. Please take them to Uttar Pradesh. There's enough land there. Why should we suffer all over again? What was our mistake of being so large-hearted? These are pertinent questions. And these are questions the government of India needs to answer. Right. Now, now you see, Tripura was a princely state. The Maharani signed the instrument of accession on 13th of August, 1947. Obviously, the government, the authorities at that time, might, must have given assurance to the people and the state at that time. A lot of assurances. Was we, a clear assurance was given that no law will be in furtherance of the Constitution of India, shall be applicable without the consent. Right. Second thing was that they will protect our distinct identity, culture, language, and our people. None of them has happened. Laws have been created. People have been shifted from one place to another. And you've created an entire setup where the indigenous people of Tripura feel voiceless, feel frustrated. Today, you talk to underground people. Today, you talk to politicians. You don't talk to the civil society. You don't talk to the people who are directly affected. 
This is clear case of vote bank politics. My previous party played vote bank politics by allowing people of a certain religious domination to come into Assam, Meghalaya, even to Tripura. And today, BJP is doing the same thing. Only thing which has changed is that the religion is different. Now, now that means, are you, are you blaming both the Congress party as well as the BJP? I am, from blaming, I am blaming the Congress party for playing vote bank politics. And I am blaming the BJP for playing vote bank politics. And I am also asking the indigenous regional parties, which claim to be son of the soil. What have you reduced yourself to? You become a Katputla of uh, Delhi. Whatever Delhi says, you follow that line. What happens to your own people? One thing you say before the elections, and one thing you say after you assume power. We have been let down by the entire political class. The so, Congress and the BJP have done vote bank, and our regional parties have just towed the line. Whoever is in power, you go after them, get some money, and keep quiet. Uh, you have made a very significant point, uh, Mr. Pradut Dev Burman. There was this massive rally, massive protest going on in Assam in one of the public places just two days ago. The protesters, the led by the All Assam Students Union, they were saying the Congress has failed us, the BJP has failed us, the AGP, which is the regional party, has failed us. Therefore, there is need for a third force to, to, take, to take up the champion, the cause of the indigenous people. Now, in the Tripura context also, do you think a new force is the need of the hour, new political force? You see, uh, uh, Wazbir, uh, I don't think that everything has to be linked with politics here. I think the politicians, irrespective of any party, has failed us. I don't know when the government of India passes these bills without consulting stakeholders. What are they expecting? There is a general yeah. sense of disgust towards the present system of democracy that we follow. People are fed up of what democracy throws up as leaders. And I am getting worried because if this sort of quality is there, then in the coming days you will see that, uh, you'll see that uh, there are elements who will use this disgust, anger and frustration towards democratic leaders and use other resorts. Insurgency was uh, one thing which they did in the 60s, 70s, 80s and I am yeah. worried that if our politicians keep on failing us, there will be elements who will take advantage of this. I don't know what we are going to say in the days ahead, but I let me tell you that the, the, the belief in the system of uh, democracy has come down drastically in the entire country and in the Northeast. So, you, so you are, what you are basically saying, Mr. Pradut De Burman, is that unless the political class appreciates and listens to the voice of the people, appreciates their sentiments and feelings, the, it, the, no one can guarantee whether the agitation will be, if the agitation is hijacked by extremist forces. You see, Wasbir, let me give you an example. In the 80s, the civil society was equally as powerful as the politician in terms of wealth distribution, in terms of intelligentsia, in terms of influence. Today, the political system is such that everybody else is too vulnerable and too weak and the politician is all powerful. This, okay. is, a, this is the other side of democracy which has happened. I think we need to create a system where a politician cannot be the final voice of the aspiration of the people of the country. There has, a, there has to come a time. I mean, the judiciary is a balancing factor. Media, you all are the media. Media was a balancing factor. The media is more or less vanished. Uh, judiciary has more or less become completely weakened. So these are institutions which keep the politicians in check. We have lost that. We have actually lost that. Right, on that note, on that very engaging note, we go for a short break. Don't go away. I'll be right back in conversation with the Maharaja of Tripura, Mr. Pradut De Burman. Welcome back. I am in conversation with Mr. Pradut Dev Burman, former Congress President of Tripura, one of the leading voices from the Northeast and of course the uh, Maharaja of Tripura. Mr. Pradut Dev Burman, you see outside the Northeast, the Citizenship Amendment Act is viewed from a Hindu-Muslim prism. 
But in the Northeast, people are worried about the CAA because they feel that it is going to be a threat to the indigenous language, indigenous culture, and indigenous way of life. This is the main trust of the agitation in Assam and elsewhere, including your state, that is Tripura. I agree, and that's the problem with India. It's too big, and it's too, uh, it thinks only about themselves. Uttar Pradesh only thinks, UP Delhi only thinks about uh, North India. And the problem is that South India, the problems are different. The dynamics are different. In the East, the dynamics are different. In the Northeast, it's completely different. The problem is that we do not have leaders from Northeast who go and tell the people in uh, Delhi, what is our view? This is not about Hindu and Muslim. I am myself a Hindu. I am a practicing Hindu. But the fact is that if you go to Nepal, there is a disturbance between the Madhesis and the Nepalese, ethnic Nepalese. Yeah. Aren't they both Hindus? If you go to Europe, Brexit is happening. England is, uh, has left uh, uh, EU. Aren't they both Christians? In Syria, in uh, Saudi Arabia, in Qatar, in uh, Middle East, there are problems. Aren't they all Muslims? Sometimes ethnicities, language, culture trans, uh, tr uh, transcends uh, uh, religion. And in the North East, we are, it's an it's a ethnic thing. And people are not realizing that. I'm very sorry to say, but this country which has moved ahead after education, after liberalization, has not realized one thing, that this country cannot have a singular policy on language, on religion, on religion, and on ethnicity and culture. Now, now, uh, Mr. Pradeep Burman, you had moved the Supreme Court. On Wednesday, the Supreme Court has, you know, uh, not given a stay, as some people expected, but instead they have fixed January 22nd is the next date of hearing and issued uh, notices. Uh, that means they want to hear the government of India's point of view. What has been a, your main argument in your own petition? My argument is this is a clear violation of the instrument of accession. I have also said that Article 15 of the Indian Constitution has been violated. Because everybody is going with Article 14, 14, 14, 14. Article 15 is when the, when, the, when the people themselves who are citizens of the country are discriminated against. And we have been discriminated against. And, and, the, and the point is something very clear. You are violating a treaty. You have violated an accord, Assam Accord, Tripura Accord. You violated the uh, ATTF Accord. But you have also now violated a treaty which was the instrument of accession between two sovereign powers on certain assurances, two sovereign countries became a part of one. Today, you have violated that treaty. This is not even an accord. That is a treaty. And the Supreme Court has said that since this law has not come into effect, they will issue notices when it does come into effect. And they have admitted my uh, case. And they have said that they will issue notices to the government of India. Right. Uh what is the road ahead now, Mr. Pradeep De Burman? Because the Union Home Minister Amit Shah has said that there is not even the slightest possibility of a rollback on the Citizenship Amendment Act. Well, that is Amit Shah's point of view. He rolled back for Manipur. He uh, uh, has uh, made a statement in Jharkhand uh, uh, regarding uh, Meghale and Kondar Sangma. Christmas ke baad aaiye, hum baat karenge. If you are willing to talk to us, then that means you have to have an open mind. He's told me, please come back, Pradyot. We will sit down and talk. So if he wants to come back and talk, obviously he has to keep an open mind to what we are saying. Or will he say that there will be no rollback and then he'll come back. Then what do I come and have a cup of tea with him? Obviously he has to have a rollback. Or he has to keep an open mind to our views and our grievances and our genuine views and grievances. Right. Now, you know, uh, do you think now we have seen violence across the country uh, take the case of Guwahati in, uh, on 11, 10, 12th of December and now la later in New Delhi and elsewhere. Do you think unidentified third parties or even political parties have decided to fish in troubled waters, trying to take advantage of the situation and make political uh, points and score political brownie points? Pradhu. Yes, 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 absolutely clear. In fact, uh, what I'm worried about right now is that the, the violence happening in Delhi will make it into a Hindu-Muslim thing. When in, the, in our northeast, it is nothing to do with Hindu and Muslims. We have Hindus coming out on the streets of Tripura and protesting against the CEA. In Assam, the same thing is happening. In Meghalaya, the same thing is happening. But in Delhi, they are going to make it into a Hindu-Muslim thing and our agenda will get hijacked. That's why I am appealing through your medium. A lot of people watch your channel. Please 
in short that this is not about religion this is about ethnicity this is about right. demography and uh, i'm extremely you know i'll give you an example wasbir my party which i represented the congress party till 3 days ago in tripura were protesting about onion prices were protesting about spg cover removed to sonia uh, priyanka gandhi and sonia gandhi i mean the congress party was not even in the ground but in delhi you are uh, you are going to the uh, you are going and attending programs and you are protesting the congress party does not even have a view it it goes wherever there is uh, a crowd it does not have a agenda and it's a extremely sad state of affair because this is not a political struggle this is yeah. a struggle for our existence and if political parties try to hijack it then they should answer to us what is their point of view because they are playing also vote bank politics now now you say i was just wondering uh, mr pradyut dev barman how can views differ so starkly how can there be such stark differences in views uh, the bjp top guns are saying that this act is not going to harm anybody uh, muslims have nothing to fear so on and so forth but if you look at the northeast you are yourself so worried man today uh, you see the all assam students union you see the northeast students organization they saying that this is a serious matter and this is going to be a huge affront to the indigenous way of life in the northeast see first of all wasbir where is the application of mine when they when you do this uh, when you uh, you pass this law where is your application of mine you've exempted manipur you've exempted arunachal pradesh you've exempted nagaland you have said that sikkim mein nahi hoga but you have left out three states which have a direct boundary with bangladesh tripura meghalaya yeah. and assam so why why were we left out what was the uh, what was the reason of keeping manipur arunachal nagaland out and keeping us in where is the application of mine so the point is everybody is playing vote bank politics all i am trying to tell our people is do not fall into the trap of these political parties we need to keep our narrative like in assam since this channel is largely watched in assam the assam agitation did not have a religious color the assam agitation had an identity of an assamese it was a pure assamese right. identity right i if that identity is kept and if media remains fair then i am sure the government of india if rajiv gandhi with 414 mps could bow down to the students of assam and sign an assam accord this government has only 303 mps okay the point is uh, we need to be united absolutely got the sense got the sense uh, on that note i go for another short break stay on don't go away i'll be right back in conversation with pradyut dev barman the maharaja of tripura <laughs> Welcome back. I'm still in conversation with Mr. Pradyut Dev Barman, one of the leading voices from the Northeast, talking on the Citizenship Amendment Act. Uh, Mr. Pradyut Dev Barman, you know, what do you make of the Home Minister? Uh, now, as you have already said, telling Meghalaya Chief Minister Conrad Sangma that come after Christmas, we'll sit down and resolve your concerns. What is it that can change? Do you are you in favor of the complete scrapping of the act, or a modification, or some modifications will do? well first let the home minister invite us and tell us that what is it in his mind how does he intend to uh, protect us if he doesn't do that we will stick to our original stance of scrapping of the bill and if the bill is not scrapped then what is it in for the people of northeast i am not going to only speak for the people of tripura i am going to speak for the people of northeast because you know what i felt really bad was when i saw mizoram say oh we are looked after we are going to be quiet manipur said oh we are looked after we are going to celebrate naga said oh now we are no longer in the purview of the bill let's celebrate horn bill i am not going to speak for my state only i am going to speak for the region and so i want a complete regional solution rather than having a solution for only my state because i know if my boundaries are safe and assam is not safe or meghalaya is not safe we are not safe now you know are states covered by the inner line permit system really safe as stated by government leaders if that is so why is the agitation also going on in states covered by the inner line permit for example we are seeing agitations in arunachal even now inner line permit is nothing but a hogwash inner line permit does not prevent anyone from entering the state 
And anyway, if anyone has to enter the state, they're not going to come through an application, they're going to walk through it. Second thing, uh, my point is, inner line permit also prevents genuine Indians, genuine Indians from entering to our parts of the uh, state. We have nothing against India. We have nothing against Indians. We want Indians to come in and visit our places. We want them to go to Kamakya. We want them to go to Kaziranga. We want them to go to Shillong, come to Agartala. Why should we prevent genuine Indians from coming? We want to stop Bangladeshis from coming. And for Bangladeshis, inner line permit is not a uh, solution. And regarding Sikh schedule, anyway, no one can buy property in Sikh schedule areas. But you can always enter Sikh schedule areas. If a, as, if a, if a person wants to go to Cherapunji, the whole of Cherapunji is a Sikh schedule area, you enter. There's no prevention from anyone entering any six schedule areas. The government of India has done a classic case of divide and rule and divided us. Divided us as Assam, Mizoram, Tripura, Manipur, Arunachal, and Meghalaya. And by doing that, they have actually ensured that they pass this bill through the uh, parliament and nobody dissents. Now, you know, Pradhu Dibbarman, let us be frank, you know, you, you, you have friends in all spectrums of the political class, you have friends in the Congress, you have friends in the BJP. Have you not been trying to convince them? Have you not been telling what is the real problem? See, in the Congress, I've spoken to Rahul Gandhi, but Rahul Gandhi right now is in uh, South Korea. So I think once he comes back, he will say something. I spoke to Hemanto Dada. He's uh, heard us. He's also put forward, I mean, he's tried to create... Uh, uh, he's arranged meetings between us and uh, Amit Shah. But the fact is, I can talk to Rahul Gandhi, I can talk to Hemanto Biswa Sarma, I can talk to uh, Amit Shah, but I need to be firm in what I want to say. I'm not open for negotiable. I'm not open for negotiation where I compromise the entire uh, uh, existence of my community. So yes, I want to talk to the people, but I cannot compromise on the basic structure on how we need to survive. So friends are friends, fine, but you cannot compromise. You, you need to have a spine. Must be, let's be very honest. I cannot go to Delhi and say, if you do this, then I will go. You tell me how you will save us. How you will save us. And everything is not for sale. Let me be very clear. Everything is not for sale. You know what? We do not, I don't want money. I don't want power. I want to protect the people of my state now, and my region. Now, yeah. Now you see the Northeast is led. All the chief ministers, most of the chief ministers, unlike in the past, in the Northeast, are young and dynamic leaders elected by the people. Then, then why do you think they are not listening to the people's voices? What, is, is it just a political compulsion? Why is it? As a young leader yourself, what do you think? Well, I guess the young have become weaker than what we had in the 80s. When you had Brigu Kumar Pukon, when you had then Prafulla Kumar Mahanta, when you had Hiteshwar Saikya, when you had Captain William Sangma, when you had leaders who had, who, who, when, he, when they went to Delhi, they spoke about Northeast, they spoke about their state. Today, when we go to Delhi, sir, sir, ajai, sir, sir, please manjai, sir, sir, thoda paisa de dije. What has age got to do with it? You need to go and speak to Delhi with a certain amount. I mean, they could stand up to Indira Gandhi. You can't stand up to Narendra Modi. I mean, that shows what has happened to us? You know why? Because the media is not asking enough questions. The judiciary takes breaks for Christmas. When the whole of India is burning, they've taken a Christmas break. That means the other institutions have weakened and the political system has become the only system which addresses our issues. This was not the case before. Please understand so, what I'm trying to say. It's far deeper. The weakening of other institution has made one class very strong and that class is finishing us so, every day, day by day, bill by bill. Yeah. So, so you are saying that agitation, the Northeast is, in an, is on an agi agitation mode and this agitation is not going to fizzle out. That is your prediction, is it? I don't know. I really don't know. But I am telling you one thing. If the peaceful voices of Northeast are not heard, there are forces which are waiting on the sidelines to capitalize and make and take advantage of the frustration, the anger and the disappointment of the people of the Northeast and take it to a different level. And I'm worried about that. We are all worried about that and we sincerely don't want any kind of uh, extremist forces to hijack a peaceful democratic uh, movement. There are two that extremist forces. 
There must be there are two extremist forces today. One which is sitting across the border waiting for uh, the government to fail and one in New Delhi which is not listening to us and putting their extreme point of view on us. And we are sandwiched in between. I am appealing I to the how, government know, of India, I know how, I please know listen how, to us. I know how passionate you are. My final question to you, what are you telling your supporters? Uh, there are reports that you are all set to now form a new political party. My final question to you. Vazbir, if Pradyot starts a political party this time taking advantage of the CEA, then he is the biggest coward ever. This is not the time to start a new political party and say that if we come to power, we will change. Karege. This is not the time to start a political party. This is the time to talk to all political parties, consolidate and speak in one voice in Delhi. This is not the time for my personal benefit. So no, I am not starting a political party till this issue is not solved. Second thing is we want to have agitation but peaceful ones. And the government should allow us to have peaceful agitation. They should not send police. They should not send uh, uh, people with tear gases and lati charge us. We are not violent. If we do not speak, you are speaking to NSCN, you spoke to Hurriyat, you speak to Naxal, but you don't speak to the civil society. Please engage with the civil society. We are not against the idea of India. The government of India is actually diluting the idea of India, right. which is about not one voice, but about all voices. All right, uh, Pradyut De Burman, thank you very much for speaking your mind out in a very, very candid manner. Thank you very much indeed. Thank you.